Right, thank you. And we've moved this desk so that I can move along here. So <laughs> I, hopefully I don't fall off. Uh, and I'm delighted to be here. And I'm going to start with an apology. Uh, so if anybody's expecting any songs <laughs> or any singing, then we've not got time for it today. So my, I'm sorry about that. Because uh, I've been asked to talk about uh, um, children living on austerity. Uh, and you'll be pleased to know I'm not going to speak for the whole 15 minutes that I've got because I want to actually show you some films. Uh, and I'm going to give you the context of those films. So, as you know, I'm Scotland's Commissioner for Children and Young People. Uh, and that's because we've signed the UNCRC. And the UN expects, for those countries that have signed the UNCRC, to have an independent human rights institution which is focused on children and young people. So that, and they, 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 they get that message across through what are called concluding observations when countries are scrutinised by the UN committee and they say, do you have an independent human rights institution? And that's led to the growth of children's commissioners across Europe and Asia and Australia and South America. Not so much in America because they haven't signed the UNCRC. Right? One of only three countries in the world, I should say. There's probably a Google answer for who are the other two countries. I'll tell you, right? <laughs> Show off time. Uh, Somalia and South Sudan, because they've never been at peace long enough to sign such a treaty. And so there's a network of children's commissioners, a particularly strong network in Europe. Uh, and it's called the European Network of Ombudspersons for Children. And it's my privilege in this year to be the chair of UNOC. And I just wanted to get that in. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's another reason for that. <laughs> and that is that last year, uh, as part of the work programme of UNOC, then UNOC received money from the Council of Europe and the European Union. And the reason they received the money is because we wanted to demonstrate the impact of austerity across Europe, and we wanted to do that through the eyes of children and young people. And so this work programme was um, coordinated from Scotland, and we employed two artistic directors who went to Greece and to Italy and France and French-speaking Belgium and Flanders, or, uh, uh, Flemish speaking Belgium and the Netherlands, Scotland and England. And they worked with children from each of those jurisdictions to uh, enable those children to create a film from their perspective about what it was like to live in austere times. And so what I'm going to show you today are three of those films. They're all short, it was a very tight script it was two minutes for each film, and we ended up with 32 films, four from each of the eight countries. And we were mindful of ensuring that they could be used in any part of Europe, so language wasn't to a barrier. So that was the script that the children had to work to. Use whatever creative means and a guidance that you're given by the directors, Tell us or pick in an area that particularly austerity has particularly affected your life and make it two minutes long. And we've exhibited these in Scotland because we have hosted a conference. Uh, our ministers have seen the films. Uh, Northern Ireland has used the films. Greece has used the films. Uh, um, Brussels, uh, where many of our key decision makers on a European basis are. Uh, and just last week, the Council of Europe in Strasbourg initiated or launched a six week exhibition of these films. So I meant to bring along actually. So these are the, this is the brochure that goes along with them. For all of those, that's for the camera. Um, and in Greece, it was converted, or they, they translated it into Greek and they've done so in, in Belgium, etc., uh, into French. So, Here's what children think of living in austere times. 
And so one of the things that I often say is that the impact of poverty is one of the key overarching issues uh, affecting children and young people. Uh, it goes alongside cuts in services. It impacts in every area of children's lives, children's development, children's enjoyment of their lives. So it's, that's the overarching issue that we as children's commissioners in the UK will be highlighting to the UN committee just next year as being the most corrosive impact on our children's lives. And so it is across Europe. And Enoch has issued a statement, and we periodically issue statements about matters of such significant concern that all of the commissioners in Europe can sign up to it. And if you knew how fiercely independent the commissioners across Europe were, you would appreciate just how difficult it might be even to get agreement on a paragraph which says what we collectively think about children living in poverty. So, the first film uh, is from Youssef in Marseille. And Youssef is, in a sense, demonstrating that business of his perception of the difference between the haves and the have-nots. Can you give me a Youssef song? I've got to get out of the way. wonderfully inventive in ways of demonstrating the world that he lives in as opposed to the world that the tourists see in, uh, in Marseille. Uh, the next film, I'm going to, that's, that's the general point if you like, haves and have nots and children get it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure what, what's been covered today but I'm sure cutbacks in services has been one of the, the prime concerns uh, and I'm privileged to be part of the Early Years Collaborative and the Early Years Collaborative, whilst it's very exciting, uh, is managing to throw up some quite significant issues, particularly with regard to the gaps that people are having to cope with uh, at local level. Allied to the importance of some of these services in children's lives. So one of the ones that's most recently seen the light of day through the Collaborative has been speech and language therapists. I don't know, are there any speech and language therapists in? Well, a big clap for the speech and language therapists. <laughs> because they are under, they are not valued to the extent that you should be. And we don't have nearly enough speech and language therapists for our children. And yet we know that they are, have a massive impact on children's lives, children's development of language. So, this next film is from David in England, and he's going to give you a take on what it might be like for some children not to have access to speech and language therapists. David.
just the total frustration of that child expressing how important speech and language therapists are. And they're getting cut. And when they get cut, nobody will make announcements about them getting cut. It'll be done under the radar, and he'll experience that where other people won't, and there won't be a light shone on it. It won't be a big herald of cuts to speech and language therapy and the numerous under services, uh, because people don't really publicise that too much. So, uh, there's another take as well. There's been mention of mental health, mental well-being. Just uh, this one's actually about mental health. Uh, and even though Bob was saying that in terms of mental being, well-being, there might not be that much difference in terms of the overall population. When you take a population approach to rich children or poor children, when you look at the extremes in terms of youngsters that really are experiencing severe mental health issues, then there are very, very significant issues, uh, very, very significant differences. So this is a film from Scotland. I couldn't bring the films here and not show you one from Scotland. Uh, and this is Tamara's take on when children are in distress, experiencing trauma and fear as a result of their poor state of mental health. Tamara. slightly hopeful film. There's some light music at the end, even though there might be, be rumbling in the background. Uh, now, those are the films. There's another 29 of them, all making an impact on people who watch them, but particularly uh, decision makers. Because the key thing here is it's about children's expression of what it's like to live in austere times. And when given the opportunity, they can put them across in really powerful ways. And I feel really privileged to have just been a wee small part of this. I, I try to take as much credit as I can, <laughs> but of course I didn't. The work was done by other people and coordinated by other people. Uh, and if I want to, if I try and link it to early years, that you know fine well that the work that you are doing here right now is creating the adult, or the young people and the adults as they grow up. And the work that you're doing provides lots of that resilience for them to be coping with those issues that some of these children here are expressing in such graphic form. So when you give your clap and you stand up, it's for Tamara and David and Yousef. Thank you. <laughs> 